Now get the point of view. I mean, well, hello everyone. So my name is Samuel from the University of Helsinki. Uh, firstly, I will be presenting the main results of my PhD that I defended in June. Uh, some of the main co-authors are <coughs> So I'll be talking about how to use multispectral multi terrestrial LiDAR to detect decline trees and, and especially concentrating on, on leaf water content. Just a brief background. So as you all know, global warming is increasing the stress on forests all kinds of different stresses, uh, droughts, pests, insects, pathogens. Many of these uh, disturbances also affect leaf water content. Like, there's no life without water. So we need more and uh, more sophisticated monitoring methods to, to uh, really uh, tackle these, these issues. And especially we must get to the early points, as, as early as you can detect, the, the earlier you can uh, act on it. So, uh, yes, as I said, the product content is affected by, by many, many stretches. Uh, and what's the nice thing about leaf uh, or water, that it absorbs uh, infrared radiation really highly, so uh, that's just a simulated leaf level uh, spectrum, different leaf water. Uh, contents, and you can see that there's really high, high differences. So I've been using a different kind of uh, commercial scanners, so it's not really uh, truly multispectral because we are not simultaneously getting the different uh, wavelengths, but we are using uh, different instruments, so basically three different scanners that are used Consequently, at the same location, you get different wavelengths. I used uh, 690, 905, and 1550 nanometer wavelengths that are quite common in the in commercial TLSs. And I'm referring intensity to laser intensity as, as the strength of the reflected energy from the, from the target. And just an example of where we I've seen this, but you can quite clearly see the differences in, in uh, the reflectance from the bark and needles. It's uh, an overspruce. I have to talk a little bit about the different leaf water metrics. Uh, equivalent water thickness is quite commonly used in a remote sensing, which is basically the amount of water per leaf area. However, that can be very highly correlated with other leaf traits, such as uh, leaf mass or dairy. This is a rather extreme example, uh, Norway spruce. So, the equivalent water thickness and LMA plotted here, you see it's very highly correlated. Uh, Gravimetric water content, on the other hand, is the amount of water per uh, dry weight. <coughs> Which is very kind of counterintuitive, uh, but here, like plotted uh, equivalent water thickness and chromatic water content, there's no no correlation there. So uh, you have to really think what kind of leaf water metrics you are using, because it's, it may be that it's not telling you about the leaf water content. This is the first test was done. Uh, in, a, in a laboratory conditions, so framing different uh, species, we had five different species, <coughs> 100 samples, and they were scanned consequently about 14 times. Uh, <coughs> we see that 15 or 15 nanometer wavelength is really highly sensitive to leaf water. So here is the 15 or 50 uh, only. Also, 690 nanometers showed some uh, differences in, in 
reflectance according according to the decreasing leaf water content. And then we when we take a normalized difference index of the two wavelengths, we can get even a better correlation. So so uh, including the other wavelength can account for some of the structural effects on the, on the intensity. Uh, one thing I would also like show you here, you can see how uh, different species also uh, are quite differently lined up. So like 690, you can uh, spot spine over here, Norway spruce, uh, and we had on the red, that's Norway maple, uh, black ones are smallly blind, and uh, um, what's silver birch? But if we look at a time series of just an example of two different samples, we can see even even higher correlations. So the ratio of, of the two wavelengths and well water thickness, and we can like almost directly measure the differences in in. Uh, the water content. And that's because when we have a uh, time series, the uh, LMA of, of the samples <coughs> is constant. And then the uh, test with live, live seedlings, that almost 150 Norway spruce seedlings that were di uh, divided in different groups. We had different draw treatments that vary in intensity. And then we were inoculating some of the seedlings with a pathogen that is associated with the European spruce bark beetle. And we had three different levels. And this were we did destructive sampling, so each uh, seedling after they were scanned, they were uh, sampled and destroyed. Just looking at the how the water content differed in, in different. So uh, these are the draw treatments. Uh, the intensity is there <coughs> from left, the highest intensity, so uh, the smallest amount of water, and uh, on the on the right side is the highest amount of water. And you could see some differences, but not very significant until. They like collapsed in the end of the experiment and started to get. So I think this is more more because of cavitation. And the pathogen pathogen group showed also quite rapid. So not all of the seedlings were infected. When you inoculate, not necessarily all seedlings get infected, but those that showed symptoms they really rapidly declined. And we got really nice correlation between uh, 905 nanometer and 1550 nanometer wavelengths, ratio of those and, and equivalent water thickness. So we were able to, to detect the infected seedlings and uh, not so well the broad, broad uh, treated seedlings. Then to our first test, uh, it's a mature Norway spruce forest that was infested by European spruce bark beetle, Supercrafus. The sign was uh, more like a low and moderate uh, infestation symptoms. There was uh, quite many like, these green attack trees that show that there's bark beetle going on, but there's no visible symptoms in the canopy. And there wasn't any like really severely damaged, only like yellowish crops. And we took samples of the crumbs and they were assessed in the field for defoliation, mm -hmm. discoloration, uh, resin flows of the stem, uh, bark peel increases and, and uh, bark damage as well. Looking at the different uh, leaf water metrics, here I really realized how, how different these are, so very water content showed 
already in the low infestation states show significant differences. Uh, but that's why I would have been to see any, any, any differences at all. Then, really what, which symptoms can we detect this, these methods? And it seems like um, we can see, uh, sorry about the table, but present flow was 1, 9 or 5, and a bit away, I'd like to show some significant differences there. Uh, also, this coloration, this was more related to the uh, <coughs> water sensitive uh, metrics and, and defoliation as well. So, some significant. And here, it was more about the shape of the intensity distributions. So, we didn't get so good results from from like mean or percentage, it's more about its purposes and, and skewness and, and other shaping metrics. And then looking at how we can really uh, classify our, our detector, the green attack trees, so attack level score that was calculated based on the different damage classes, so including uh, uh, the resin flow, the scoration, the population. And the green ones are the healthy trees, and the circled ones are on the green green healthy trees, low station and moderate on the correction. So we were quite able to put nicely separate the, the green healthy trees. And we saw that both canopy and stem metrics were important. So I think that the, the resin flow on the stem allowed us to, to really detect the green attack trees. And looking at the different leaf water content metrics, uh, what was also very interesting that the gravimetric water content showed a significant relationship with the stem intensity metrics. Also, there seemed to be a correlation between at the bark moisture content and, and the canopy moisture. And the equivalent quality is using the canopy metrics, we show see some correlations that are not, not very not very significant. Uh, some words about using laser intensity with needles and here we we come come to the fact of why the shape intensity metrics were so so uh, important because uh, you know that uh, laser intensity can be described with the radar equation so that tells us that actually the relationship between intensity and distance varies according to the target so if we have a target like needles that are not covering entirely the laser footprint, then we get these uh, spherical losses that affect the intensity distance relationship. So we need some kind of new calibration methods to account for this. I'm not sure you think it's possible to totally account for the, for the effects, but uh, maybe at least some kind of averaging is, is possible. The conclusions, so I think we can get really, really accurate results from using multi-spectral TLS in, in, in measuring and monitoring the water content. I think it really opens up a lot of interesting possibilities as indications to species identification. Uh, we may detect diagonal changes in, in leaf water. So we, we really use some dense time series we could reveal some some more subtle, subtle changes in the water within canopies that are not that we are not able to derive with traditional methods. <coughs> How you measure water content really matters. It's, I learned this the hard way. Uh, I was back in the beginning always using using the same metrics and, and but finally going into the Real forest applications really 
ensure that you need, you need to carefully choose what you use. And I do think we need more collaboration between different research teams. Like one example of this, I'm starting a collaboration with one uh, ecologist who was uh, studying plant water dynamics. And he didn't know what equivalent water difference is. They use totally different metrics. So we need to have open discussions so we can provide the data that they 